But some of them we just want to attend. So, so it's a pleasure to be here to share some ideas with all of you. But before I start, I would like to of course welcome you to this talk. And I also want to find out a few things about memory from you before I, I share something on this. Uh, can I ask you, how many of you think you have a terrible memory? How many of you think you have a fantastic memory? Oh, you have. How many of you think you have an average memory? Okay. Can do. Tom Bola. You know, I lost my mind. Tom Bola. Your health does not depend on what you eat. If you ask your doctor this, does my health depend on what I eat? And I say, no, 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 it doesn't depend on what you eat. Let's say you go to bar, you go to Mway, you go to Causeway, or whatever way, you know, they got a, and you buy a lot of vitamins and this A to Z vitamins and you take every day, do you think it become healthy automatically? No. It's not that easy, is it? Because your health does not depend on what you eat, but it depends on what your body can digest. And another thing is, when it comes to wealth, this is what we want, isn't it? Health, life, and wealth. When it comes to wealth, there are two things. One is the amount you earn. Does your wealth depend on the amount you earn, or, or on how much you save? What do you think? Which are you think? How much you save, is it? In fact, have you heard of people who have become uh, not very rich? Just because they are earning a lot of money doesn't automatically make them rich, isn't it? Have you seen a lot of sportsmen? People like Maradona, people like Mike Tyson. You know Mike Tyson? The boxer? Did he make millions of dollars? I mean, huge dollars. He converted to Malaysia even more money, isn't it? But today, he's broke. If he all made so much money, 10% 10, 10 of what he made, if we made, we would become a millionaire, multi-millionaire. But he made a lot of money, he lost it all. So it's on what you say. And your wisdom. Is how wise you should become, how wise you become in life does not depend on how many books you read, it's how much you can remember of all the books that you can read. Now, would you understand, would you uh, agree with me on this that the more you learn, the more you can earn? Agree or not? If you want to earn more, you've got to learn more. Now, some people ask me this. They say, you look at Lingo Tom and all that. He never learned a lot of things. He also made a lot of money. Do you agree? But today, can we follow his footsteps? Can or not? If can, then ask the children all to stop going to school. Become a lorry driver. Because Lingo Tong was once a lorry driver, right? And he came once in a Is that a secret to be well? No. Every one of us is a PSC. Now, let me ask you this. How many of you are working here? Working. Working people? Okay. Mr. Tan, right? Mr. Tan, where do you work? Uh, factory. Factory, yeah? Okay. Uh, let's say, what's the name of your factory, please? Mr. Tan, what's the name of your factory? Southern Wire. Okay, Southern Wire. Okay, do you? If I ask you, are you self employed? No. No, okay. Most of you would agree with him, right? He actually works for? Southern Wire, he's not self employed. But I don't agree with him, with, you, with him and with you because I say he's self employed. Do you know why? Because. The, the, reason, the reason I say that is because. The reason I say that is because he is a PSC. If you want to use a PSC, is it? 
a PSC means, now of course you're working for Southern Wire, I don't ask you how much their salary is, Mr. Tan, but let's say now Northern Wire comes along, competitor, and says, uh, Mr. Tan, we're going to offer you double your salary, and we're going to give you a BMW, your chance, okay. we give you a driver, and we're going to give you a condominium in, in Mount Kera. Would you possibly take the offer? Immediately, okay. So that means you can't say you're working for Southern Wire, you work for yourself. Southern Wire today is your best customer for your services. Do you agree with me? You get what I'm saying? Now what I mean PSC is you're a personal services corporation. You're selling your services, uh, your personal services, which is your time and your knowledge. And that is why Southern Wire is paying you whatever salary is paying you, because it's your best customer. If, as I said, another company comes along and offers you, then the new company becomes your better customer, isn't it? So would you not sell your services to that new customer? Would you or would you not? Say, no, I work for Southern Wire. No, 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 no. For my life now, I'm going to be stuck here. No, right. Now, but to do that, if you want to increase your value of your services, let's say from, let's say you're earning 10,000 now, you want to earn 20,000, then you've got to change yourself. In the sense that you've got to learn more. And you I say learn more, you've got to increase your ASK. You know what's ASK? It says ask. Yeah, before you can ask for a, a better salary, you must have what is called an attitude. You've got to change or improve your attitude. You've got to improve your skills. And you've got to increase your what? Improve your knowledge. Do you agree with me all of you? When, you? when you improve all these three, then your market value increases. And one of the things that is important is for you to improve your mind skills. That's what this whole program is about. Mind skills. In fact, Utah today conducts a lot of workshops on mind-related uh, programs. So for example, in June we have a mind festival. It's all credential mind. Mental skills. Like you learn mind mapping, you learn memory skills, you learn speed reading, you learn creative thinking, a lot of things. And all this can help you to improve yourself in terms of your attitude, skills, and knowledge. But today, since we are going to talk about a lot about uh, memory, I'm going to concentrate on this. Just on memory. Now let me ask you this. Let's say those of you who are studying, how many of you stay in college? Quite a lot of people, most of you from the Utah campus in summer, right? If let's say your lecturer comes tomorrow and say, okay, class, I'm going to give you this set of numbers, and I want you to go back and remember, memorize all these numbers, come back in one week, I'm going to give you a test. You must remember all these numbers in the right position. How many of you will be absent from the test? <laughs> Quite a few of you will be absent. Okay, if your boss were to tell you this, Mr. Tan, you, if you cannot remember this number, sorry, next week you come back, you, you don't have a job. Would you manage? I suppose you would, then. Yeah. Most of us would. You have to remember all these numbers? It's crazy, because it's not possible for a human brain to remember all such numbers. Agree or don't agree? Agree. Anybody who tries to do this must be crazy. And I am such a crazy guy. Because I try to remember them, and guess what? I have such secret. You believe me or not? Call you again, Mr. One Time. Please tell you the truth or what? <laughs> you know, I was doing this in Singapore. I had a group of students. One of them was a standard five student, so like, in like uh, Han Junior back. And you know what the boy told me? He said, Sir, before we test you, can I ask you to do something? I said, What is that? Can you remove your glasses first? I said, What is that for? He said, Maybe you can see the reflections. You <laughs> that? Kids these days. But okay, deal the other day when I was about to say, and one lady, the audience, she said, Jaya, before you know, the C5 came out yesterday for the name Magnum. <laughs> First prize, you know. I said, really? And she, and then she said, Jaya, you think you can predict uh, which one is the next one? I tell you what, I know. She said, ah, one of these. She said, ah, she said, one of these, but how do you? But I said, I don't know which one, I'll tell you what, you buy all. Show one will sign. But don't forget me, I'll tell you the same thing. Alright, anyway. 
You are testing, right? Oh yeah. You need to remove my glasses on. Oh, should I give you the idea? So now we are looking, so maybe something to use glasses. Okay, I'll take it up. Just do the same side. Okay, now ask me any position, let's say H5 or C10 or A4 or D10 or whatever. Any, anything, let me try. Just put your hands and just shout out something, I'll try to. Can't see where you're sitting. <laughs> G6, is it um, 7040? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Any others? 6i. Yes. 6i. Huh? 6i. 6i. Is it 0716? Correct? No. Oh, no? Oh, no, no, no. It's not. Zero, is it 07? Zero seven four six. Yeah. Correct? Okay. Can we try another way around? Sure. You show the number, then you tell me which column and which. That is a bit tough. That's a bit tough. I can't do, I mean, I'm still practicing that. Because I have to look for, it's, it's quite tough. Some, sometimes I get, sometimes I don't. But try, maybe you can try. I, I, I don't get it, but uh, let's just try. It's medium. Seven four seven one. Uh, I think it's D6. Yep. I don't know, sometimes I did something. Alright, okay. Now, the reason I'm able to do that, why do you think I'm able to do that? I was born with a special brain. You agree that? No. You don't think so? I was! No, no sometimes I ask people, you know, how many of you here think you're a potential genius? None of you. You know, sometimes people tell me some very interesting things. They say, say, Jaya, you know, the geniuses are all people like Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton, you know. All of them are what I'm Why do you know what? <laughs> and I'm not a way to walk. You know what? How can I? You know Impossible. I tell them one thing. Who do you think are smarter, the white man or the Asians? Asians. But then I say you are a potential genius, none of you are like, me, potential genius. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're very humble. We do things, we don't put up our hands. You know something? You know where yoga came from, which country? Yeah. India. We all know that. Today, you know who is teaching yoga? The Americans. Guess who's learning? The Indians are learning from the Americans. You know how they do it? They get this sweet, young, sexy girl doing yoga on, on the CD. They, they shoot that on. Of course, they put some nice music and she goes, this is, this is yoga. <laughs> and what we need to buy and you watch. Wow, look at the way the girl is doing <laughs> And you know something? Today, the white man has learned feng shui and he's teaching feng shui to the Chinese. And Chinese are going, going, oh, feng shui, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> You know what the, Chinese, the, the white man is good at doing? They take our things, they polish it up, make it a little bit more interesting and sell it back to the buy it. But where did the knowledge come from? Womanta. More they got. You see, ours. So don't ever think that you are any way less than that. No, not in any way less. In fact, if it asks you, you think they're better. In fact, they're all that modern medicine, you know where they came from? From the East. You know that. The ingredients. They take this, this, this small ingredient and put it in the table and send it back to you. Only thing we at the Asians, we take the whole leaf. Ah. <laughs> we, we get to take all the leaf and then we leave. But they took the ingredients, okay? Right. Have you seen this guy before? You. <laughs> My good friend. He has the same name as me though. He was interviewed in the Star newspaper. Can you see the Star? The, this guy, Charles Fernandez, actually interviewed some of his students. You see what? I only need a what? Short time to study and understand it pretty clearly. And Joseph Thio says he learned to believe in himself. Another girl said, I used to get a lot of what grades? What grades that? C grades, and now he's able to convert them to A's. 
Now, this is what a student can get. And what about us? Okay. Why do you want to have a good memory? Now, I want you all to please take part with me. Eh? Tell me why you want a good memory. I mean, it makes no sense for you to learn something if it's not going to help you, isn't it? I mean, unless you're going to say, you know, I have a good memory. It feels so uh, it must It must help you, isn't it? Why would you have a good memory? Can someone tell me why? Who is among? You got it? For studying purpose, okay. You want to pass your exams, all right. Can I say exams? Yeah. All right, for exams. Cool, okay, cool. Two. Talk about exams, huh? Can I say something? There are only four kinds of students. Students who study hard and students who study little. You know, what a, you know it's a study hard student? These are students who actually burn the midnight oil. They study very hard. There's no time for other things. You talk to a face with a word thing. Face and book. <laughs> What's the connection between face and book? See, did you watch the, the, the latest uh, Clash of the Titans? See, is that a, a chapter in physics or what? <laughs> Don't you feel like giving them a cake? You know, even they go to the toilet, they take the books around it. They see the toilet, they're reading. And you know what they'll tell you? They say, why are you so crazy? You go to the toilet, relax. Ah, that's why I take the book. Ah. Because all that no disturbance, you know. I'm all by myself. <laughs> and these are the study hard students. And then they got a group of study little students. Let me ask you this. The study hard students, do they get good grades? They get. But are there some students who study hard and also get poor grades? Yes. Of course. Are there students who study little and yet get good grades? Yes. Of course, are there students who study little and fail? No. Correct. Now let's say this is group 1, 2, 3, and 4. Which is the worst group to be in? Really, look again. Can you have a show of hands? How many of you think is 1? How many of you think is 2? How many of you think is 3? How many of you think is 4? 4. You think so, sir? No, right? It's 2. Why 2 and not 4? Because the, the students in group 4, they don't expect to pass anyway. If they pass, they will be shocked. <laughs> they will be like, how did I pass? <laughs> Something must be wrong somewhere, but let me keep quiet about it. In fact, these students, if they get out of 7 subjects, let's say they got 3 C's and 2 B's and 2 D's, they will throw a party. They say, wow, I got 3 C's. I'm going to throw a party. But the students in group 2, if they out of 7 subjects, if they got uh, 2 B's and 3 A's and 2 C's, or let's say even 5 A's and 2 B's, you know what they will say? Oh my god, there goes my life. I don't feel like living anymore. I met one boy recently, you know. After the PML results came out last year, I went to the house of visiting the father. And the father said, uh, you know, uh, my son just got his PML results. So I, you know, as most people do, hey, hey, good, good, hey, how does he do? He said, very bad, uncle. Very good. I, I tried to console him, I said, come and sit, sit down. It's okay, don't worry. Look, results are not the only thing that determine your mind, you know. And I tried to console him. Then I said, by the way, how much do you get? Very bad, uncle, I only got six A's and one B. <laughs> I, I was really stunned, you know, I didn't know what to say. I said, go, what? I mean, one B. I said, forget about the B. Why are you not looking at the six A's? I said, that's okay, but I, I, I really want to get the seven. I said, it's okay. Life is not the end, no. Which is the best group to be in? Do you all want to be three students? Oh, yeah. Then I'm going to help you with that. I, was, I wasn't planning to talk to students, but since a lot of students here, I'll also share some ideas with students, okay, on how to study. Okay, exam. What else would be uh, good for you? What would a good memory help you to do? Public speaking. Wonderful. Now, you know there was this man who was coming to a big function like this. And he came on stage and he said this. Ladies and gentlemen, before, on my way here, God and I knew the speech that I'm going to make. And now only God knows. <laughs> <laughs> I 
sometimes when you come in front, we actually forget our lines, you know? Right, so sometimes it, it's just terrible, isn't it? How would you like to be able to speak confidently without any problem, without referring to notes? You see, I don't have any notes in my hand. You, have, you, have you ever gone for a speech where you see somebody standing like this and say for the next 20 minutes or so, ladies and gentlemen, it's a real pleasure to be here. It doesn't look very pleasurable to me. <laughs> it's a real pleasure to be here to share a few words on how to have a better memory. You know, once I went for a public speaking course and the guy was talking like this, I walked out. You mean, you want me to be able to become a speaker like you stand behind a lectern? I don't want that. I mean, I want to be in front, talking to you all. I want to be your friend. I want to be have a conversation with you, yeah. isn't it? Not like, you know, where not all of you listen to people. <laughs> I don't think that's I don't like that. You know? I mean, that's... No fun, no fun. You know, it's not. No fun, man. If I are talking about this, no fun, man. You know, there was this Chinese, this, this Chinese educated girl who was struggling, you know, sometimes communication problem. She was struggling with play and uh, there was this white man sitting next to her, Quello. And uh, you know what, like, Quello, you know, being friendly, you know, Quello always like you. So you're like, hey, hi, Quello. You know, she's like, uh, she said, you're going to England. <laughs> Actually, she's going to see her brother to maybe take up a course or something, because after SBF, her brother's like, he said, come away, I see what, what course I can get for you. you know, maybe you can study with me, you know, see, stay with me, stay with me. So she was like, what are you going to do in England? Study law? <laughs> she said, law is a very good subject. <laughs> the white man said, law. In fact, England is where you should take law. She was a bit confused. How do you speak law? Then she said, uh, you're asking. She said, but, but you're, you're traveling alone. You're so young, girl. You're traveling alone. I said, no, ma. Where's your mom? <laughs> you mean she's sitting behind somewhere? No war. <laughs> Say no war where? In Malaysia or in England? <laughs> Sometimes people can really, really misunderstand. You know? So you've got to be very careful when you talk. Alright, another reason, okay, public speaking is a very important area. What else? What else can good memory give you? Relationship, wonderful. Namzai. How? How do you think your relationship can be improved by having a better memory? You remember the name. You remember the name, yeah, okay. So that you don't wrongly spell the name. Don't spell the name, don't even say the name. No, just not there, just agree. Coming to the children. See, now, if you make a mistake when you call somebody by a wrong name, they don't like it, is it? And sometimes, you know how we all like to. Cover up. Hey, hi, brother. How are you? <laughs> brother. <laughs> hi, Tambi, sometimes. You know, you see, Tambi. Ane. Oh, Ape. Aso. Ati. Call somebody by name. Do you know something? As just now, Sally was mentioning. When Malaysian, Malaysian Airlines was trained by me through Utah. This, not this campus, the other campus, uh, the other PG campus, well, CE actually organized a program for, and you know how many days you train Malaysian Airlines for five days? And I trained them for five days on how to have a better memory, and they were trainers, so that's why it took me five days. And they trained the cabin crew to remember passenger names. And guess what? After our training, the, the cabin crew remember, could remember on average 20 names per, per cabin crew. Is that wonderful? So that means they serve you, uh, let's say, let's, Gladys, huh? Gladys, right? So let's say the lady comes to you and I say, Excuse me, Miss Gladys, here's your orange juice. How do you feel? You feel like, and on, or when you're walking out, you say, Miss Gladys, thank you for flying to the I hope to see you again. You go, Huh? Ah. You get what I'm saying? Would you be like pleasantly surprised and say, Thank you, eh? Hope to see you again. That's what they normally say, isn't it? You know, the name is, yeah, really, yeah, relations. What else? What else? Thank you. Very good point. What else? What if you cannot even remember the name of the person, but you can remember even his puppy's name? How's your 
Ladies and gentlemen, parenting is looking all the things. I see there's good roots written on the floor. And looking at the students on the floor. Next study, parenting is parenting is I don't know. <laughs> and he came back, he was sitting next to me, and he said, Jay, I'm going home. So why not? He said, No, Jay, I feel so stupid. I said, why people looking? What would they think of? I said, hey, hello, these things happen to everybody. Don't take it personally. It's just so happened that, you know, you forgot your mind. So what? We're all human beings. And this one, he never came back. And, I mean, I was in a club. He never came back to the club. He got so to see. It's how dangerous can be. And even when I was thinking about the speech contest, when I memorized my speech, I never won any speech contest. You know why? It was so, like, uh, not, it was so canned, you know what I mean? There's no, I don't speak from my heart. So you must be able to do that, which is to speak from your heart. Okay? Next thing is, it helps you in your, as you said, relationships. And of course, it also gives you a view of the students that for the exam as well. Now, I'm going to test your memories, all right? I'm going to see how good your memory is. Are you all willing to take the test? No. You do not mean. I don't want to think it has. But before I test your memory, would you want me to give you a chance to test my memory? No. You want to? I see something on here. Set is here. Alright. Okay, I'm going to give you a test of my memory, but I will need a volunteer to come in front and write on the board. If no volunteer, you can't test me. Can I have a volunteer to shoot? Anybody to write on the board? You're volunteering her. You know, I thought only students have this disease, you know, it looks like even adults have some disease like this. What's the disease, or not? We Malaysians have a disease called the Hugo disease. Hugo disease, and then somebody asks her one day and says, Hugo? Come on. Or somebody says, like, But I know these people who actually become successful in life are those who are the what? I go, not the ego. I go. Okay? The I go people are the ones that can I do that? Can I volunteer? Can I answer that question? Can I ask you a question? Can I? But there's one thing about the difference about Malaysians compared to East Westerners. 
Although I don't like that sentence in some way, but some things I got to it. I'm going to admire that. They're very outspoken, you know that. If, if I'm talking to a, let's say, American audience here, and if I want to ask them a question, or if, if I say any questions, you know what they will say? Almost all their hands will be up to Jeff. What do you say? How about this? How about this way? And why can't I do this way? But if I ask Malaysian audiences any questions, they'll go. <laughs> Understand? Everybody understands very well. Why not put up your hands? Why not? Be why? We have a wallet. At least I managed to convert one person. I convert to her from a you go to an I go person. What's the name? What's the name? There's only one way to say a name. There's how many ways? You may call her in one way. You know what? Give one way, Clemens. One thing I want you to do is write down these words that they are going to give you. Alright? Here. And then they will give you some numbers, you write the numbers. They will give you. They will give you. They may take more. Would you believe me if I've given a 20 minutes speech totally in Cantonese? On why you must learn English? <laughs> of all things. <laughs> No, it's a school, really. They actually wanted me to speak in Cantonese on why you must learn it. I never asked them why it's such a crazy thing. Call a Chinese fellow to talk, ah, why me? Eh? They say they want to give these students uh, a, a hidden message that another person from a different race can speak a language. So what's the big deal about you learning English? That's the message they want to give. Okay. So you think of course. Anyway, now, please give a word, any word, as long as an English word, and you can put and she can put them anywhere. For example, you say camera on a LCD or projector or speaker or whatever it is, and you say number seven. Then you can say uh, steps, number three. Puppy. Sorry? Puppy. puppy. What number do you want on puppy? One to one to ten. Huh? Four. Number four is puppy, okay? Anyone else? Hardworking. Sorry? Hardworking. Hard Are you hardworking? <laughs> Alright. What number do you want hardworking? One less, huh? Number eight is hard working, okay. Attitude. What number do you want attitude? Seven is attitude, okay. Acknowledgement. What number? Number ten is acknowledgement, all right. Paparazzi, two. Sorry? Paparazzi. Paparazzi, number two. Paparazzi and number two, sure. Paparazzi. The, the wheel. Car wheel. Alright. Don't really rent the wheel. What number? Number one is wheel. Okay. Number one is wheel. Anything else? Number six. Isentropic. Isentropic. Okay, okay, okay. Sure. Isentropic. I S E N. Is it somebody's name? Uh, no. T R O P I C is a condition for process. Condition for? Process. Oh, Ison. Ison Tropic. And number six, is it? Okay. <laughs> yes. Equilateral. What number do you want equilateral? Huh? Number nine is equilateral. Okay. Number nine is equilateral. Lateral. Okay. Yes. The oxy rifle Provided you can spell it, I would allow that. <laughs> no German words, please. <laughs> oh, English. Eh? All right. Okay. All right. How do you spell that? D E. What's the number? Three. Three. Only left. Three. 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 Three.
Seven had two. Ninety-seven had two. All right. Eleven. Twenty-seven. Twenty-one. Twenty-seven. Twenty-one. At one number. And number three is twenty-seven. Three is twenty-seven. Okay. Thank you, Alwyn. You are clever again.
Can I give you the words first? Can I give you the words, let's say, in a random order? I give it to you, even numbers backwards and then odd numbers forward. That's right. Number 10 is acknowledgement. Number 8 is hard working. Number 6 is. Isotropic. Uh, that was number six. Uh, number four is puppy. Number two is paparazzi. Is that right? Yes. Can I give you one to ten now? Number one is wheel. Number three is I give up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dioxy ribonucleic acid. Correct? Number five is uh, lamb. Number seven is attitude. And number nine is uh, equilateral. Correct? Number number. Number one is 79. Number two is uh, 97. Number three is 27. Number four is 98, right? And number, number four. Number five is 18. Number six is 37. Number seven is 47. Uh, number eight is 73. Wow, how many realized that number is okay? <laughs> Number nine is 21, and number 10 is 48. Would you want to learn how to do this? Yes. So that you can just stand on stage and do a demonstration. <laughs> you see? Or you don't want to do that. As long as you help me pass the exam. All right, sure. I'm going to do that. I'm going to help you do remember all these things, okay? But before I do that, let's just take a small test, right? I hope you all have got papers and pens to write. Uh, I'm going to give you all a test of 20 words. Then we're going to try and remember those words, okay? And those are very simple. Try and remember those words. Take two minutes. I'll time you. Take a pencil and write down the twin words in the same order. Don't worry about spelling in the case we have one or two spelling errors, okay? In fact, on the 14th of this month, we are having a mind competition. Those of you interested, come and take part in the memory competition. If you do well in this and I share some ideas with you, Probably by order. No, no, they're, they're right. 
All you do is one finger up and one finger down. Does it work? Is it easy fancy? Does it work? Why is it fancy? Is it easy? Now just like that, we have to use an easy way, which is the imagination. Now let's see how to do this. As far as memory is concerned. Memory is a skill that we can all learn. You know? And remember this, there are three steps when it comes to memory. One is called register. It's when your brain actually records the information that you're trying to learn. Or you're listening to somebody, or you're reading a textbook, or you're reading a newspaper, or anything at all, you're looking at something, your brain is doing a recording. That's what it's called register. Retain means is the process of remembering, or putting it in the brain and keeping it there. You know, keep it. Retain it up. Keep. And recall is when you are taking it out. Now, of all these three steps, which do you think is the most important? How many things is register? How many things is retain? How many things is recall? Actually, the most important is register. It's how you register. Now, the only reason A was able to remember all the things was not because he has a, he's a great retention power, or you say, oh, he's very good in recording. No, he registered it differently from the way most of you would have done. Most of you went like, Radio, 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 picture, picture, picture. He didn't do that. He said, I saw this radio, and this and he made a connection, and he made a silly story. And he didn't see it, so I said, it's a ridiculous story, but it works. You get what i So you. You have to use that. And you have to use your what? Imagination. Can all of you imagine there's an elephant right in front of all of you? Can you imagine that? Can't imagine. Imagination is very rusty, right? <laughs> I don't blame you, you know why? In school, our teachers have helped us to freeze up our imagination. They put it in deep freeze. Now what I suggest is take it out and defrost it. Put it in the microwave oven and defrost it. So now I can use my imagination already. You know why? I tell you why. Example, there was this girl who was in primary school. She passed up an art paper. She did some art and she passed it up. The teacher took and gave her a D. Of course, obviously, the girl was very frustrated. She went, teacher, how can you give me a D? You know, for them, the D is very, it's a terrible, it's like the end of the world. It's I don't think I deserve it. So the teacher looked at the girl and said, you silly girl, don't you know that? The, I told you that the sky, I, I gave you a color. I said, the sky is always one color? Blue. Blue, you and I know that the silly girl thought it's orange and red. She went and put orange and red, you know, and all over. And then when she went back, uh, and the teacher said this, she said, yeah, I know, teacher, you did say that yesterday, but you see, yesterday evening, my mom took me to the playground, and I was looking at the sky, and I saw the sun was a very red color, and the, you know, the sky was orange and red. So that's why I came back, and I just followed what I saw. You mean the sky is wrong? And you are right? <laughs> and she said, took the piece of paper back and she said, okay, cross off the D and gave me an elbow. Imagination. Don't ever say that you're, from, you see, you can be across it. Okay, can you imagine an elephant all over Can? Just, just came in this way. Okay, now I helped you, right? Can you say white? And the whole elephant turns to white in color. A white elephant, you see that? You see that? You know that there was one man today when I was going to say train the people in Malaysia and one man said, he said, Jaya, I can never imagine a white thing. I said, why not? He said, I've never seen one in my life. I said, neither have I, but imagine it. He said, no, I was trying very hard. I said, can you imagine painting it white? Uh -huh. <laughs> and let's say now you say red dots and the white elephant has suddenly got red spots all over. Can you imagine? A dot, a whole car dotted elephant. It's really interesting. Cute. And now you say, tiny. And then you say, eh? Where's the elephant go? And you come here and you saw, oh, that's the elephant. And you pick it up in your hand, you put it in your hand, and say, oh, look, cute elephant. <laughs> A white elephant with red dots, so like, can you imagine that? If you can imagine, then imagination is working perfectly. Because when you imagine, you don't imagine, but you must also use your uh, dramatic sense. How to make something dramatic. Make it ridiculous, that's what he said. Ridiculous, right? Make it crazy. Know something? Movies are crazy, don't you agree? 
That's the reason we watch movies. If movies were logical, none of you and I would watch it. Don't you think so? The only reason is because our brain likes crazy things. Seriously. I mean, can you, can you imagine if they say, uh, well, making a movie about King Kong that is a normal size? Nobody would watch. The only reason you watch King Kong is because it's so huge. And the only reason you watch Avatar is because it's so illogical. When you see the 14 mountains, remember that? Have you ever seen the 14 mountains in your life? Have you seen Indian movies of the worst? Have you seen that? When they fall in love, they must dance and sing. <laughs> Have you seen that? Hindi movies and Tamil movies? You mean the Indians always do that? Some, uh, some Chinese ones, you say, yeah, you really do this, do this. You say, did you do that in your wife? I said, no. But the movies we watch, they said, they have this movie. <laughs> so, use your mind to make it too much. And you see, whatever is unusual, let's say today, this is my hairstyle. Can you imagine I'm here and when Tamil Shami introduced me, I came from there and I did my hairstyle a green color with this. You know, Trojan hairstyle, green color. Would you ever forget me? Green color at all. You say, oh, many years ago I went to Utah, this crazy trainer, you know, came and stood on the stage, uh, funny, funny looking, you know, green color hair, ah, you are just, you never forget, right? Thinking is thinking. Now I'm going to show you how to remember this. 20 items again, because the more you think, the more you link, the more you can think. Okay, let me show you how to link. It's called the linking system, which is actually what it is. But probably, I make my story even more crazy than this. Okay, let's see how I do this, okay? Can you imagine with me that after this session, all of you go home and you turn on your radio? Turn on your what? Turn on your radio. Can you listen to the songs and let's say the songs are so crazy that you got so angry that you keep the radio. And you kick it so hard, you don't realize how strong you are. The radio starts flying up in the air. It's going higher and higher and higher. It's going, oh, where's my radio going? And it was going higher and higher. Finally, there was an airplane flying by. The radio went just in time when it hit and broke off one of the wings of the airplane. And now the airplane came like this. It took a nose dive and landed right in front of your eyes. There's a lamp post in front of your house. You saw the huge lamp holes, the rambling king, and there was a big explosion. And out of that came a picture, the most famous picture in the world. Do you remember the one? you remember the picture? Half smiling, half not smiling. The lady, what's her name? Mona Lisa. And you know the guy who painted her, what's his name? Leonardo yeah, no, no, da Vinci. And that's it. Do you know that the, the original Mona Lisa has got no, no what? Eyebrow. And let's say she is a modern Mona Lisa, so she's got a phone in her hand and she's calling to the guy. Is it? It's the Leonardo da Vinci. When you drew my picture, you didn't put in my eyebrows. You know that? <laughs> so while she's talking, I go up to her and say, Excuse me, you must be this Mona Lisa. She put the phone on the hands, anything. I said, I'd like to welcome you to the 21st century with something you probably have never seen in your life. It's called a cigarette. Now, please take this cigarette. And she says, What can I do with this? What? See here, man. See here. This is how we smoke. You, I know you're not a smoker, but you know, just I, I, I'm a smoker, so she will. <laughs> she coughs and she drops the cigarette on her chair. See, it's a lighted cigarette. It burns a hole on the chair. So she panics and she jumps on the horse to escape this from this crazy guy. And you know, when she jumps on the horse, the horse panics and lays an egg. <laughs> egg broke, and inside there you found there was a teacup. A big tinker. And he said there's something inside, you shook the dress on how to tell a dress. And he gave it to Miss Jasmine and said, Hey Miss Jasmine, why didn't you find where it's at? She looked nice at you. And she said, there's something inside, and he shook the dress and thousands of flowers fell out. And he took all his flowers and said, Why should I waste all these flowers? You decorated your window and you're admiring your window when your neighbor, who you've got a terrible neighbor, you know what? Every time he sees you doing something, he's very jealous. He said, How come he's got so many flowers to decorate his window? So he took a big bottle of perfume and he threw it through your window and ended right on your science book. And let's say he now took your science book and you're smelling your science book. It's a nice smelling science book. From inside the science book, fell two pieces of gardenia bread. And now he said, Wow, this is what I really need. And he took this gardenia bread and he took a big bite, but he broke the tooth because some idiot has put a pencil inside. And now you're really deep. What can I do? So I'm looking for a piece of towel, a towel or something to wipe myself. And without realizing that, you actually found a, 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 a curtains, your mom's latest curtains, and you wipe yourself. Like, my 
Oh, Jesus goodness, I'm going to be dead for 